Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today with the newest of the Shmi Mobiles, my Shelby GT500 on quite an unusual day here in Miami. It is overcast. It looks like it's going to be raining again. It was raining earlier on today and it is still very, very humid. But nonetheless, today I'd like to talk about some unusual things I've been starting to learn about the beastly Mustang behind me. Now ahead of the car going for PPF, it will be getting SunTech paint protection film and there'll be more to come with that very, very soon ahead of the stripes and the big adventures taking the car across the country but I have been driving it a little bit around Miami I must confess keeping the speed down trying not to get it damaged in any form but just learning a little bit about it beforehand and there are some things that have really stood out so today I'd like to talk about 10 or so unusual things about the Shelby GT500 Firstly though, I am very pleased with the spec choice of the new Shmi-mobile. I knew it was going to be bright, I knew it had the potential to be quite polarising as well, but when it's a car as aggressive and beastly as this, I think it can suit bright colours remarkably well, as well as Grab a Lime being one of the launch colours for the GT500 that was only available for the first year of production, the model year 2020s. But remember, I didn't spec this car from new, I found it and bought it with the support of Auto Tempest, who enable you to search across the country all of the different listings to find a car that meets your desired specification in this case a bright color the green or orange with the carbon fiber track package and we can now add on the stripes as well so this car grab a lime carbon pack as i said with the carbon fiber wheels also with the gigantic carbon spoiler it wouldn't be a shmi mobile without a massive rear wing because of course it will be driven on the track also it takes out the rear seats gives you a stiffer suspension setup with the sport cup 2 tires and one day this car is going to be doing a lap of the nurburgring i think it's going to be a permanent shmi mobile so hopefully when i've got it back over to the uk that will be possible. It's also nice to have a bright green car back in the garage. I've owned a number of green cars from my Mantis Green 650S Spider through the Kinetic Yellow Suzuki Jimny, the Gelbgrün 911 GT3, even the Oxford Green BMW M8, a much darker colour, and the British Racing Green Classic Mini as well, to now having the Porsche Taycan wrapped in dark green, and also the M3 competition coming soon in Isle of Man green. But this is going to look so cool when it's back home in the garage with the other Fords, which is why I want to add as well the Shelby Racing Stripe the two stripes over the top this car does have the painted gloss black roof you could spec it from new with the vinyl over the top stripes or you could even have the stripes painted for about ten thousand dollars so more than ten percent of the value of the car so to be honest i'm quite happy to do them afterwards and you're going to see exactly how we do this but don't forget also we've added the new designs to the cheers by shmi 150 store we've already got them up thanks to those of you who've already bought one let's start though with my list of 10 unusual things about the gt500 Firstly on this list, the tyres of the car. Now the track package comes with the upgrade to the Sport Cup 2 tyres, even stickier rubber from Michelin than the Pilot Sport 4S tyres that you have by default. At the rear, we have some very wide tyres, as you would expect, 315 by 30 ZR20, the 20 inch wheels, 30 profile, 315 wide. But what's particularly unusual about this are the front tyres. Check out these numbers, 305, 30 ZR20, 305 wide front tires. The Senna only runs about 245 wide front tires. That's normally a rear tire on the front of this, which does mean when you're driving, you do feel a bit of that grabbing from the front, but it gives a lot of grip, a lot of turn in, and despite being so wide with the carbon wheels, they're not all that heavy either. Oh look, an Aventador, I'm not sure if you can hear it, sat in black Aventador crawling through the traffic over there. Can certainly hear it. Next up is something about the carbon fibre wheels. Now the carbon fibre track package gets the carbon wheels to save some weight, unsprung mass, even though the car itself weighs 4,200 pounds. It is no lightweight by any stretch of the imagination. These at the rear made entirely from carbon fibre and you can see how the carbon goes inside to the barrel as well. But if you come to the front, you'll immediately notice they're a slightly different colour. Now this has to be done for the heat. They have this reflective material on them to help control the heat from the brakes. Obviously big brakes, big weight, lots of heat being generated when you get firmly on the anchors, but it does look a little bit weird when you notice the differences between the front wheels and the rear ones. It would be much nicer for sure if that could have been painted dark in some form, but this is how it's also done with the carbon wheels on the Ferraris like the Pista. I also want to touch on something to do with the suspension, and particularly the rear suspension. Now the car has the Magna Ride setup. It's a different setup in the GT500 track pack to the regular GT500, but the thing I am noticing is that the ride of the rear is very lumpy and bumpy. When you drive over uneven terrain, the back of the car has a very, very hard time. Now I'm not sure if that's something I've done wrong in terms of the setup I know you can adjust the camber there are a few different things that you can change about it or whether perhaps there's something I need to get looked into but I don't remember it being so rough 
when I drove the car with the Triple F collection and also the press cars back just over a year ago. So I'm wondering if something's funny. The front suspension rides really nicely. The rear suspension, you go over a bump and you feel it jolting you. The hood has a few things about it, namely the racing pins for the latches and the vent in the center. Now on a race car, you just press those to open it. But in the case of this, you have to come through and pull the lever in the driver's side footwell. And yes, left-hand drive car, no GT500s are right-hand drive. Then when you've come around, you might think that all you need to do is to press both of these pins down to release it, but there is actually a secondary catch as well with the heavy bonnet just underneath. It does, however, reveal the 5.2 litre supercharged V8, the 2.65 litre Eaton supercharger, which with the seven speed DCT goes to the rear wheels with all 760 horsepower. The other thing about the hood though, is this underneath. You will notice here for the racetrack, get rid of it for the road, keep it on. Because of course you don't want rainwater to fall through, but you can take this out just with a few bolts around to have additional cooling and airflow through those very cool vents that you have on the bonnet. And I do wonder how it would look if that was changed to carbon fiber as well. To close it, have to slam it back down, but that is straight back in place. Something I can tell you about cars that are heavily aero-based is that you get things happening like this. Obviously, with very sticky front tires and with these openings behind the arches, you have a lot of stones coming up to the side skirt. So pretty much wherever you park the car, there will be some stones left collected there on each side. The other thing is to do with the rear wing. Check out the shape of this and how much it's effectively like a bowl. You can actually adjust the angle of the rear spoiler, whether you want to pivot it more for a little bit more downforce or keep it flatter for going faster speeds. But if you imagine out in the rain or when you've just washed the car, this would typically get filled with water, which is exactly what happens on the Senna with its rear wing and also the Senna's front splitter, but they've actually thought about this one. Check this out. There are these small openings on each side to help the water drain out so that it doesn't stay looking like a puddle. Another thing that I touched on before is that with the carbon fiber track pack, you have the rear seat delete. Now you can fold the front seats forwards. We've got the seat belt going through this loop, which we can open up. There's even the film on there, which I'll have fun taking off shortly. But in the back, no longer are there any seats and it is forbidden to travel with passengers back there. But you can actually retrofit the Mustang seats back in, which would give you the folding rear seats to make more luggage space from the very back. But obviously like this, it's a little bit awkward and I would have quite liked to have the option because I think to be honest, I probably would have chosen to install the seats if I could have done. I think I would have preferred to have it as a four-seater with the two seats in the back than saving a tiny bit of weight back there. But who knows? I'm looking forward to driving it on track to seeing what this is like. The next item on the list involves the key to the car and something totally unique in the Schmimobile. So if we just close it and lock it for a moment, you can press either on here or you can lock it, of course, from the key, another press, and it will chime, I think, to confirm that it is indeed locked. This is basically the same key as the Ford GT, but with the Cobra on the back instead of the GT logo. But what's unique about it for me is that you can use it to remote start the car. Now this is quite normal here in the US. All American cars basically can be remote started from the key, but over in Europe, the two times button here to start it would typically be the button to do the boot or the trunk with a blanking plate below because we can't do that. So this is the first time I have ever owned one. Now I've been getting in and out of the car a lot, so it's probably not going to work for us right now, but all you have to do is a double press of this button the car would recognize you've done so and it would start up i guess it needs a little bit more battery or maybe it's not locked or in the right state i don't know exactly uh, what's going on i haven't fully worked out the system right now it's locked at the moment give it a go there we go the sound from outside remote starting the car from the key then when you hop back into the car, you still have to unlock it. So a double pull there, the touch to unlock initially. Oh, that's nice in the air conditioning. And you'll see to drive, press, start button, you still have to do the usual start in effect, but obviously the engine is already running. Now, something I find quite interesting involves the gear selector for the seven speed dual clutch. So if I just close the door for the moment, oh, that's very nice <laughs> with some cold air. If let's say you were in drive with the car, park brake is off and you open the door, check what happens to this it automatically turns itself back to park. They call that return to park. So if you do something funny while you're driving, it will basically protect you from making a complete mess of things. Obviously the same from reverse, it pops it back into park as soon as you open the door. I think the same happens with the seat belt and a number of other things as well. Now then, being a Shelby, we've got the Cobra button here. Give a press of that and you've got my mode and track apps. Now track apps is awesome. Inside here, you have all of your controls like the line lock, if you want to shred up your rear tires or rather heat up your rear tires before doing a drag strip run. You've got the launch control where you can set the RPMs and exactly what you're doing with it. You've got the acceleration timer, the brake performance, the lap timer, and even more options 
and different things that you can set up and control. And this is what I love. This is a very tech-based approach. Obviously, we've got the large digital screen, we've got the smaller sync system in the center, but you can go through all of this and use these different tech functions to improve the performance and have a lot of fun while you're doing it. If, however, we just turn this off for the moment, back into the quietness, obviously a very deep grumble out of this car's V8. It makes quite the sound, and when it is fully run in, it asks for 500 miles before you have an oil change service. You can bet that this car will be doing drag races, it will be doing track action, it will be doing all sorts of things. But so far, the biggest thing that I guess has surprised me, the 10th item in this unusual things list, is how many people take photos of this car. Now, in a weird way, I guess I'm used to it with the supercars, like the Ford GT and the Senna, but I didn't realise it would happen so much with the Mustang. When I stop at a petrol station, a gas station, or pull up outside a hotel, or even just driving and camera phones come out to shoot it, and I guess that's because it's effectively the ultimate version of the Mustang, of the Ford Mustang, an incredibly common car. There are probably 10 of them spread around this car park, but this is the rarest, craziest 760 horsepower version and it's bright green. Let's not forget that the color has almost certainly got a big factor to play in that. It stands out from a million miles away. But yeah, a bit of a surprise. I didn't really expect that so many people would perhaps notice it and want to take photos of it. What you might also have noticed there then is that I have now driven the car about 200 miles. So in the early fuel economy stakes, this doesn't do so well. It does about 150 miles on a 15 gallon 60 litre tank which is not so ideal. It's about as inefficient as the Ford GT, unfortunately, which means for the upcoming massive tour, which I think is going to be about a 4,000 mile, 6,000 kilometer adventure, there are going to be a lot of fuel stops along the way, and that's probably going to get quite frustrating, he says, as there's definitely the sound of something American and V8-like in the background, just blasting away. But I'm very excited to get to grips with the car in full. Like I said, I do want to try and suss out the suspension a little bit because it does feel really, very, very firm. But all in all, the fact that this is a $100,000 car that can do a quarter mile in about 10 and a half seconds and can blast around a racetrack not far off the Ford GT is what I find so fascinating about it. And I also just want to experience living with it and then ultimately have it back home in my Ford collection with the GT and the Heritage RS. Another thing I was thinking about on that front is when this and the Heritage RS are side by side, there's a lot in common at the front. They both have the black central section through the grille and maybe a carbon one of those would look pretty nice on this as well. And the way the headlights wrap around. So I think those two cars are gonna look mega. And then there's the fact that this is the ultimate American muscle car. There's the ultimate in hot hatches with the Heritage RS and one of the ultimate supercars in the Ford GT. That trio together is just gonna be something else. I've been talking about it for years and I'm really excited, even for six, nine, 12 months down the line when eventually it happens to take this back home. For now though, a few early thoughts about the new Schmiemobile here in Miami in Florida, he says, as there's a, uh, a little remote control buggy just blasting through the puddles in the car park. Thankfully, it stayed dry on me for today. Next up with the car is going to be taking it to get the SunTech PPF started, then to work on the black stripes. And then I think pretty much straight after that, it's going to be adventure time to get on the road across the country, the Where's Shmi US Edition Tour. We've got the t-shirts in the store now, the grab -a -lime ones, as well as the red, white and blue of the American flag also. So check those out. The link is down below. A big thanks again to Auto Tempest for helping me find the right Right car to add to the Shamimobiles. Do check to find your dream car out there as well. That's it for now though. I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for your support as always. Cheers.